We got to get this part out of the way. Yeah. Is there a sexually charged energy to the nudist resorts or to the nude volleyball? So, again, that's a big misconception that, like, basically nudists are swingers. Hello? Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? I am a gecko on the computer, and your name is Megan, correct? Correct. That sounded that sounded weird. Megan, what's up? How's life? <laughs> I sounded weird or you sounded weird? I sounded weird, but you sound a little weird too. Hu- the human voice is is strange. It's no one's fault. What's up, Megan? How's life? <laughs> Not too bad. Um just got home from work, so it was a very long day, but um yeah, I've been um listening to your show a lot recently and I decided I would call in. To end my night. Um, well, Megan, uh, it says here that you wanted to talk about a. Uh, you wanted to talk about playing competitive nude volleyball around the country, and that HBO is sure. doing a documentary about your nude volleyball group. Mm-hmm. The floor is yeah, yours. So- so I got introduced to it in 2018. Um, you know, I grew up playing volleyball and a friend of mine, you know, mentioned that they go to it and the volleyball, you know, is really, really good. And I was like, you know what, why not? So I went and, you know, how they work is I call it a circuit. There are tournaments that the first tournament is in March. That's what opens the season. And then the last tournament is in September. And there's about one a month, and they're at all, you know, different nudist resorts. So there's two in Florida, three in Pennsylvania, one in Virginia, um, and so on. And basically, you know, it seems super strange when you first hear it. So for me, it was a lot of just pure curiosity of what is this? Um, But yeah, I mean, our biggest tournament, which is the one that HBO was at this year, is the one that closes the season in Pennsylvania. And there's about, I would say, between 600 and 700 people that actually compete. And total, there's probably about a thousand people that go. Um, You know, it's very serious, quote unquote, volleyball in that we have you know, separate divisions between novice B, double B, A, and double A, which is collegiate, meaning that either they played professionally or, um, you know, in college. So, and I mean, for example, in 2009, ESPN sent a team of Olympians to the tournament, and basically they were doing a story about body image and how you can be an Olympic athlete and still have, you know, body issues and our best team beat them. Um, But yeah, it's a pretty incredible group. Again, we all travel from various places to these. We all stay on quote unquote campus. So you either tent or you have an RV. Sometimes there's places to rent on um, the property, but um at night, it basically is a music festival. There are definitely a lot of drugs done. Um, and then we play volleyball nude you know all day. What, um, Pretty, you, know um, what I gotta, you know what I got to imagine? The best part of uh, traveling around the world uh, to nudist resorts playing uh, nude volleyball is? What? You don't have to check a bag because you don't need any clothes. <laughs> yeah, the packing is really easy. I mean, basically all my stuff that I pack is for, you know, stuff that we wear at night, like, you know, whatever. Like we'll have scenes at night. Um and, you know, whether it's like glow or forest animal and I always have all the glitter. Um but yeah, so we have DJs who are just part of the group and bring all of their equipment. Um and it's, you know, basically an EDM festival at night. Um, and they've actually started a nudist music festival that's coming up in a couple of weeks. And there'll probably be about 400 people there. This is their third year of doing it. 
I have a lot. I got a lot of questions. Were you a nudist before you started doing this stuff, or was like being a nudist something that was interesting to you? No, not even close. Um, in fact, prior, I would say up until you know I was twenty eight, twenty nine. I mean, I was terrified of being nude. I mean, I used to think that I had a boob phobia. My ex, who I was with for nearly twelve years starting at 18 to 29, he, I don't think he could pick my boobs out of a lineup, truthfully, because I was so incredibly modest. Um, but, you know, it's, it was just one of those things that, you know, I figured why not? And it's not, at some resorts, it's not mandatory nude for everybody, meaning that like you can wear cover up, et cetera. It's only mandatory nude when you play. Um, but yeah, I think you quickly, um, I know it sounds like crazy and shocking to a lot of people when they first hear about it, but you would be amazed at how quickly it loses its shock factor. Um, you just don't think about it. And, you know, I think that one of the things that makes this, you know, group of people so special is that when you don't have clothes on, you don't portray any like you know, um, first impression. So, you know, based on what you, how you dress, like you kind of, you know, portray a certain, you know, um, what sort I'm looking for, you know, uh, characteristic, whatever the word. And, you know, I think that again, because nobody, you know, you're, everybody's so vulnerable and, you know, it just allows you to, and I know it sounds cheesy, like connect with people on a whole different um, level, and you don't have your phones with you. You're not allowed to have your right. phones out of these things. Right, right, right. That You know what? That's an overlooked um, uh, aspect of the nudist community is that everyone is a little bit more present because they're not on their phones. Mm-hmm. I never even thought about that. And, and I wouldn't call – I'm not a true nudist. Um, you know, there's a big – true nudist can kind of be a little um, – uppity and think that they're better than others, so to speak. Um, and, you know, so I'm not a true nudist. It's more so about this community. And I mean, they're all my closest friends um, just coming and hanging out together. And again, I feel like there's no, it's a lot harder to judge somebody when they don't have clothes on. <laughs> so wait, so, <laughs> that makes you know, sense. this is a very interesting thing because you went from, I mean, I'm curious what, what within you inspired you to make such a hard left turn? Because you're telling me that you were so uh, uh, modest with your body that even like mm-hmm. your your boyfriend like was barely seeing you naked. Husband, you know, all the way. All, your husband barely seeing you naked. All the way to uh, you know having a whole audience of of people seeing you naked. Mm-hmm. Well, you're also not alone in those environments. It's not like you're the only person standing there naked by yourself. But I will say, so like, I can tell you when I was in seventh grade, it was the summer going into my eighth, my family was down in Destin, Florida, and my stepsister and I met these two boys. Of course, I liked the asshole. And we were playing this stupid game to diddle. And at one point we agreed to flash them. And so, you know, like we're super nervous, but whatever. So we flashed them and the guy that I liked, his first reaction was, you have those kind of nipples. And I was like, holy shit, what kind of nipples do I have? And it's crazy to think that that small little, you know, moment just escalated into literally, I mean, me not wanting to be naked in front of myself. And when I separated from my ex, I think I just kind of had this, you know what, if I don't like myself, nobody's going to like myself. And, you know, once you kind of just say, fuck it, then you, you know, you get positive reinforcement and, you know, you just realize again, and there are no two bodies alike, no two bodies. I joke that, you know, a woman's vagina is like a snowflake. There are no two alike. So, you know, and it's just how you feel about yourself. Do you like, um, hmm. are you, you're not at a thing where you're like, you, 
do you compare yourself to to other people, like seeing uh, all these other people naked at all? I mean, of course you do. And, you know, I will say, like, I'm relatively fit. And, you know, I so for me, I I think I don't feel I'm, I can't speak for somebody who, you know, maybe doesn't feel as positive about their body. But again, you know, women, especially, they're constantly encouraging each other. And, you know, it just you realize that so much is in your head. Um, and, you know, it it's just. Yeah, I mean, you know, you put out a vulnerability that makes you feel really comfortable at the end of the day when everyone else is so vulnerable. And we, you know, in turn, know each other so weirdly well, because, again, I think it strips you of you know, any kind of boundaries also in terms of, you know, what is taboo or, you know, when you all see each other naked, again, it just kind of takes away any, um, you know, shyness. So sometimes we know too much of each other's business. I gotta ask. Mm -hmm. We gotta get this part out of the way. Is there a sexually charged energy to the nudist resorts or to the nude volleyball. So again, that's a big misconception that like basically nudists are swingers when in fact swingers are not at all naked people generally in the terms of like, I mean, they're very different, but I will say so with nudists, one of the big things is separating sex from nudity. So, for example, you're not allowed to wear bathing suits um, because they think that sexualizes you. And it's funny, my boyfriend and I were recently in Florida with his family and I was wearing a bathing suit and he was looking at me like, you know, oh my goodness. I was like, what are you doing? You see me naked all the time. Why are you looking at me like that? And he's like, I don't know. You just look hot. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, you know, it's, there, if you are walking around with a heart on, you're out immediately. Period. I mean, that's just weird. Um, wait, really? But wait, wait, wait. So, so if that... somebody, if somebody is in the nudist, so if somebody is a part of the nudist colony, or they're watching the new, I assume. Mm-hmm. Okay, I just real quick, the audience at these things is naked too, right? Because it's on a, not all of them, but I assume a lot of them are. It's not. It's not mandatory nude, but yeah, as a whole, I mean, people are in some shape or form, you know, nude. So, uh, look, obviously, if somebody were, like, jacking off or something, that would be inappropriate. But, like, if, if mm-hmm. just if they have a heart on, they're they're out? Oh, they're, they're out 100%, like, without any ifs, ands, or buts. And, you know, again, that's a, a big thing is safety. I mean, I have never experienced any issues with somebody making me feel uncomfortable. But, again, the reality is that everyone's nude, so the assumption is that you have to be hyper aware of that versus, you know, if you're in any other scenario where there's creepers, it's just not as hyper aware. Um, And so, you know, again, it's just a, I mean, there's no tolerance for it. But in terms of, like, you know, I mean, yes, people are, and we're all, you know, adults well i don't know people in our prime will say and so yeah of course sex and hooking up and you know all of that is very prevalent but it's not any more prevalent per se than it would be in another situation um but yeah i mean it's you know again i think that people are is, you know, you is, know a lot more about sex, maybe, because people are a lot more open and willing to share. And we're all that, intense, so you know what's going on. <laughs> is that a thing just at the volleyball tournaments or, like, at all the nudist colonies? If you get a boner, you're out. Oh, I mean, the volleyball tournaments, they're a little bit more relaxed on the rules. But when it's not a volleyball tournament, they are psycho strict. Um, Interesting. I and, knew that. you know... So I would not go to a nudist resort just to go per se. Like I go because of the volleyball tournament. Um, And so, yeah, and it's not, I know again, like nudity and wingers kind of get, you know, lumped together, but it couldn't be further from 
the truth. And a lot of these places are family friendly, which I will say family friendly is outside of my comfort zone. Um, oh, you know, yeah, that, that I sounds don't like, uh, yeah, that, that would be, that, that sounds like it would be out of the government comfort zone as well. For families to see each other nude? Yeah. I mean, but why out of the why would the gum or why would it be out of the government's comfort then? I, I, I look. I'm open. I'm open to the uh, the openness of of desec. I am open to the idea of desexualizing nudity. But I uh, I keep the I keep, keep no. The I completely agree. It 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 weirds me out. But again, that's my comfort zone, not theirs. So you know. I respect that, but do I, would, if I have a family, am I going to, like, you know, raise my kids like that? No. But it's not per se about, like, separating sex from nudity in terms of, like, my friends in our volleyball tournament. It's just, again, a, you know, it's a byproduct of, you know, just our situation. Like, we just happen to be nude, and I think that's a huge part of what, you know, has made us such a great and close group granted there's probably like 400 of us that are you know well i would say 200 that are regulars um at every tournament but it's you know it's just a means of like hanging out with your friends but on a totally different um crazier more vulnerable level and keep i mean again we party really hard we play hard but we probably party harder um Um, i mean yeah it sounds like um... no it's I'm so surprised. I'm just, I guess I'm like, I'm sorry, I won't let the boner thing go, but it just seems like, uh, I, I assume, maybe this is where the misconceptions lie, but I assume, mm-hmm. actually, okay, the more I'm thinking about it, I was going to say, at first, I assumed that people would be walking around these places with boners all the time. Hopefully not the family ones. Um, mm-hmm. But I assume people walking around with boners all the time. But also, I'm like, I'm kind of putting myself there, right? I'm like, I'm naked. All these other people are naked. It does, it actually... When I think about it, and I'd, I had to go to a nudist colony. I, I'd see what's going on over there. It kind of actually mm-hmm. sounds like a pretty not sexually charged place when I think about it, when I really put myself out there. It seems like kind of a, a, a very normal vibe, except everyone's naked. Although I will say, at night, maybe a different story. Yeah, and again, I think it's, you know, like you were talking about going to Electric Forest and like the music festival or like Bonnaroo. It would be similar-ish to that, and except for during the day you have, you're playing various tournaments and each day is different whether you play sand, grass, or hard court. Um, But, and then at night, like everybody's partying, but you just don't have clothes on. And we're not all stark nude, so... You can't, don't, like, I'm sure, like, envisioning you looking out and everybody's stark nude. Like, that's just, that's not really um, yeah. how Some to people have, portray like, it. Like, people, on, a lot right? of, well, like, you know, I wear, um, like, not pashminas, um, sarongs. Like, a lot of people wear sarongs um, that cover up some. And, you know, for some reason, onesies are huge at night. But, um, you know, it's again, I think it's a, the fact that you're all nude and you're so comfortable being nude and you don't think about it, it just creates a bond and, you know, connection with the other people that you don't find outside of that. Now, Megan. Um, and the other part. Tell me, mm-hmm. tell, what's, I mean, you say you, you play hard, you party harder. What's, what, what kind of crazy things are going on at these parties? I want to kind of get into that. So we have, so we have, well, now four main DJs. And again, I mean, I can send you videos and pictures. I mean, it's quite a production um, that, you know, we put together. It's not like, you know, somebody doing a playlist. And, you know, there's definitely um, a lot of mushrooms, a lot of acid, a lot of molly. There's a lot of drugs that happen. Um, And, you know, it's, that's crazy. I mean, you know, it's just people having a really good time, a lot of dancing. Um, like um, my boyfriend's one of the DJs. I, I, 
I've been reading the chat. I'm sorry for reading the chat, but somebody in the chat okay. asked if uh, somebody in the chat asked if dogs are allowed at the nudist colonies. I'll answer this one. They are, but they have to wear clothes. <laughs> Um, it depends on the resort. They all have different rules about whether or not um, dogs are allowed. I mean, we've brought our dog to um, a tournament before, but really, they're just a pain in the ass to deal with. So, um, Megan, because um, you have to watch them. What's your like? You put, let's. I. I. It was. I. First of all, thanks for uh, calling in and talking about all this stuff. This is fascinating. I. I. I might try to. I don't know where. A nudist colony is, but I have always been fascinated by the idea. I definitely want to try going to one at some point. You want to go during a volleyball tournament? When's, do, you you any, do you have any do you have any volleyball tournaments festival. going on in 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 California and Los Angeles? Um, none that I go to. Um, so the, I, like I said, we have the music festival coming up July twenty third, um, and that's outside of Philly, and then the big. The biggest tournament, which, you know, I think for newcomers, because you see all like the traditions and we have like this group called the Tiki's and there's, you know, all these rituals and it's just, it's super fun. But that's in um, September, the weekend before Labor Day or after Labor Day. Um, And that's at a resort called White Thorn. But I promise you, if you went, you would never look back. What is it? Where, because where you have is to think it about the people that, Where is it? Um, it's at White Thorn Lodge. Oh, goodness. Don't ask me where exactly. BFE, outside of Philly. <laughs> oh, it's out of Philly. Um, okay, all right. I, I, I can see myself going there at some point. No, I mean, I'm. it's, you know, I... You have to also think about the type of people who are willing to go to this. I like also I want to say something real are... quick. I want to say something real. I'm sorry I keep interrupting mm-hmm. you, but somebody else in the chat brought up an interesting point. They said, "What about female boners? They're getting away with it." I mean, I guess so. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but just put like yourself somebody... in a situation if you were at a day party and somebody's walking around with a boner through their pants. That's weird. You know, I don't. It's just the thing. I think a, I feel I would feel bad for them because a bo- like a boner. Again, I like I said, if somebody was like standing in the middle of the nudist colony jacking off, it's like yeah, that guy's you know he's got to go. But if he's a, I mean a boner, it's like I feel bad for that guy because if you have if you're wearing clothes and you have a boner, you can like tuck it up into your yeah. thing or put your hand in your pocket. But if you're naked, it's like what, you, you, what are you going to do? You can't even. I mean, I'll say if you're, that if, if you're being a gentleman if if you, and you have a boner out in public, you can do. You, you have, you have choices that you can make to conceal your boner. Well, you can walk the, away. Yeah, I, I guess. If I guess. it happens, you can walk and away it, and you know, put your boner and, in timeout. Basically, I mean, I've messed with my boyfriend before and kind of quote unquote made happen or people on the dance floor but again there's a difference between like blatantly walking around with a boner and wait a minute hold on hold on so you've 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 been with your boyfriend so you've done this thing where you've been with your boyfriend and then you've like like, and and you've messed around a little bit just to give him shit you give him a boner and then you run away and you point and you're like he has a boner get him out of here (laughs) that would be hilarious if I did that that Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's, there's just, again, it's a environment that is, you know, a lot of weird people could come around. And so it's just a very, you know, hyper where, like, if there was anybody who is making somebody feel uncomfortable, you go tell one of the, you know, main people and they're out. It's just a zero tolerance policy and it's that simple. Um, and guess, you know, so you feel really safe. I guess I, I guess I'll just, I get it. I, if somebody's like staring at you with a ball, if someone's being a fucking weirdo about it, but if somebody is like looking ashamed with their head down on a bench away from the people and he has a boner, let, let that guy stay. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, I mean, absolutely. And, you know, I will say that, um, well, one thing that's fascinating when it comes to news, you would think that. I would be, what I've learned about nude bodies is flaccid penises are so different. Like, 
there there are like it's just so fascinating to see because I guess I haven't really seen many but oh my goodness I wish that we could do a competition where you had a picture of somebody's flaccid penis and then a picture of a hard penis and you try to match them up I want to do that I want to see that, those differences that sounds like an evening activity at the nudist colony you should definitely pitch that oh definitely could get people to do that but um yeah no so it's you know again the people though that go for you to be open to it you automatically aren't somebody that has a lot of like you know um preconceived like judgments against people you have to be pretty open-minded um but yeah anybody out there i promise you if you come you won't you won't look back Okay, what is it again? I'll Unless this one stuck. in Philly. I'll check it out. So it's actually, I lied. It's Pitt, outside of Pittsburgh. Oh, all right. I don't know how. Um, it's called. But... Do you know? Do you, do you know any in California? To. Um, not in my circuit. There are ones in California, but the circuit I play in, um, we don't go that far. It's more up and up and down the East Coast, and there's several in Canada, but I haven't gone up there. Are there? Are you playing anywhere um, near New York this year? New York City. Yeah. Um, my sense of direction is all kinds of effed up. I mean, I guess it would be the Philly, um, which, like I said, the uh, music festival, which again is there's much more. I mean, it's all emphasis on music, but there's volleyball tournaments going on during the day. Um, that is outside of Philadelphia in starts with an M. Um, but yeah, no, the music festival. It's you know, again, you come and it's just something you can't describe until you experience it, well, and um... you I, you will quickly forget about the nudist like being naked mm -hmm. and if anything i mean it just will become yeah i don't I'm you just gotta very try, excited but I... by the idea of several people hearing this and showing up to this nudist colony and being like a giant green gecko sent me here yeah flaccid penis. i mean all i promise will remain flaccid about... throughout the duration of my <laughs> stay you have my word um you want to know a funny story recently is so, it about a, guy getting a lot of my friends. No, not exactly. Yeah, sure. um, a lot of my friends, like, I talk about therapy gecko and they know I really like it. And recently I had taken some acid and uh, started to go a little bit south. Things were not going well. And my boyfriend called our best friend Jody and was like, I don't know what to do. And she said, Take her in a room, turn off the lights, and put on therapy gecko she'll be oh, good oh that's nice oh that's nice is that, is that what happens exactly what happened oh that's nice what okay how damn well what do you remember what episode was playing oh my goodness no oh, no man. clue so, so but you were just either like, way it you were you me... were dro drooling tripping fucking balls and freaking out and then you just like sat in a room and listened to the podcast yeah, and I just love that she knew that's what I needed. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. That makes me feel good. Yeah, but I can post in the comment section, um, you know, the information about the music festival and if people, I can, am I allowed to get my Instagram? I never check my Instagram. If you, but, yeah, if you want um, And seriously, I mean, you guys, I'm not kidding. If nothing else, like, why not? And you don't have to be nude. But you won't, you won't regret it. I'm gonna show up um, wearing just the head. I'm gonna show up wearing just the head, <laughs> the gloves, and the feet of the gecko suit. <laughs> uh, that would be, yeah, no, that would be great. Um, <laughs> I have a friend who he has, um, he's gotten melanoma, so he has to be covered. He cannot like you know, have any sun exposure. Mm. And he had to get like all this documentation to show, like prove that he has this and that's why he has to wear clothes. And basically he wears like head to toe the brightest colors possible and then like cuts a hole where his dick is. 
that's pretty fire. <laughs> so that's his n- nudity. But um, yeah, it's again, I mean, you just have it's a vulnerability that you put out there that allows you to connect with people that I haven't found anywhere else. Well, Megan, um, any final thoughts? You can share your Instagram if, if you still want to do that. Uh, any any other thoughts, feelings, sentiments you want to share before we go? I mean, I hope that you guys, you know, come and experience it. And then you can call in and say, I get it. <laughs> Rock and roll. All right, Megan. Thank you very much for right. calling. And um, you, the, 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 I hope, I hope we've brought some 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 business to these to these nudist colonies yeah and i hope people have a better understanding are a little bit more intrigued by the idea have a good night megan bye oh you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna you know those cock socks you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go to the nudist colony just the head the gloves the feet and a and a bright green cock sock. That way nobody, nobody. That way I, you gotta have something in case if you get a boner. Man, I can't believe, I can't believe people will get kicked out of these places for having boners. Again, I get like I get it if you're like being uh, being weird about it, but if you are just like, I mean, we've all been out in public or somewhere where like you just randomly get a boner for no reason, but you have you have like. I mean, even getting one with sweatpants is stressful. But getting, I mean, imagine being out and you're just naked. You have no tools whatsoever. I mean, I feel I feel bad for that guy. This theoretical guy that I'm making up that doesn't exist. All right. Hell yeah. Hello? Hello? Hey. How you doing, buddy? Oh, hey, what's up, man? What's your name? My name is Sid. Sid. Well, Sid, my name is Lyle. How's it going? It's going pretty good, man. Um, my semester just ended. I'm back home. I'm chilling. Um, <sighs> well, Sid, um, what's your relationship like with your parents? It's pretty good. It's actually, it's actually really good. Um, you know, um, they're actually in India right now. They're not oh, at yeah. home, so I'm home alone. So, um, no, I'm just chilling. They're real nice. They um, they financially support me. How come you didn't go to go to India with them? You were too busy with school. Uh no, nah, I couldn't. My sister, my little sister is here, and she she still has school, so I gotta watch her uh, okay. in the house and the dog. What? What are they doing in India? Um. It's actually, um, so last year I got, I, I got diagnosed with cancer. So they wanted to go to India and go to this, like, like religious, like temple and like go pray for me, I guess. And, um, also my grandma died a couple months ago. So they went to do some like religious rites with their ashes. Do you think, um, you can be on, look, they're gone. All right. So you can be honest with me. Do you think that's going to do shit? Um, I don't know, man. Like, I don't think anybody has has the real answers. You know what I mean? So, if they want to do it, um, I'm gonna let them do it. And if it does something, it does something. And if it doesn't, okay. it's all good. When were you When were you diagnosed with the cancer? Um, it was last April. I don't I don't have it anymore. Luckily, I. Oh um, wait, so they're going to pray for cancer that you don't even have? I guess so. I mean, I guess they're just like trying to. Pay that sounds like a waste of a prayer. No offense. <laughs> I guess. I guess so. I guess so. They could pray for like a million dollars or something, but they're they're praying for something that already happens. Yeah, I mean, that's, if you want to pray dumb. for a million dollars, I would. I'd rather have a million dollars than not have cancer, which I already don't have cancer. What kind of cancer uh, did you have? It was testicular cancer. So, you know, prognosis is pretty good. You know, it's not Damn. as serious as other types. Is so, it a bummer? Um, you know, is it a bummer to have the funniest type of cancer? It, it, yes, 
it actually very much is because when I have, when I tell people I have cancer and ask what type, I know I have to say testicular and like it's just it's just a little bit awkward. Like to me, it's not awkward. Like I'm I'm over it. I'm cool. Like it happened. It's done. But like it's it's just a little bit awkward saying that. Mm. Did your um? Did they have to cut off your balls, or you still got balls? Oh, I, I got one. I got one. Oh, so they cut off one of them. They did. They they cut off one of them, but um, you know, other ones, other ones carrying the weight. Oh shit! Okay, so this wasn't even like, no. So the cancer yeah, didn't yeah. go. The cancer didn't go away. The cancer was cut out of your ball sack. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't. I mean, I don't think cancer just ever goes away on its own. But um, yeah, I guess you could say it was cut out. I had some. Yeah. I had like a like a month of chemotherapy, um, just so like it wouldn't come back or whatever, and. I think I think we're good. It sounds like God really, really didn't do shit on this one. Yeah, no, God. It sounds like God tried to do shit but couldn't do shit. It's true. God tried to. You know, do you think maybe it was like God? Part of God's plan was to kill you, but uh, innovations in medical technology foiled him. No, actually, the way I like to look at it is that. This is something you know. I just had to go through to gain some perspective. You know,、uh, I think I was talking to you in the chat. I'm actually pre-med, so、um, sorry. I'm actually like a little bit nervous right now. I watch、no. this. Chat, I watch this stream like every day. Like that's oh fuck yeah, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. Okay, yeah. what's、well, so、what you were、um, saying? All right, 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 right. Okay, you were in the chat and you said that you go to Temple, which is where I went to college. Yeah, yeah. I heard you went to Temple a couple days ago, which is crazy. I'm actually wearing a Temple shirt right now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah.、Um, but you're in. I went for something stupid. You went for like how to. You you said you're in pre med, right? So you're learning how to cut off people's balls when they start to try to kill them. Yeah. So like, the way I see it, I have the perfect medical school essay to write now. So yeah. yeah, that is a good. That is a good way to see it. You got good perspective on this issue. Yeah, man. I mean, I just gotta. I mean, it. You know, I'm just thankful that it wasn't anything a lot worse. So the best I can do is take away something positive from it, use it as like motivation. You know, to be a good doctor, to be a successful doctor who helps people. I like that. What are what's your sister's deal? Is she like also in school? Yeah,、um, she's in high school. So that's why that's why I gotta stay home because I I need to pick her up from school, drop her off, watch over the dog. Um, she still has her semester going on. It's about、okay. to end soon. Do you have、She's、a good a,、um, sophomore? Do you have a good relationship with her? Yeah, it's pretty good.、Um, we don't talk like that much, but、um, I feel like ever since I went to college, we got a little bit closer. You know, they say like, what, what's the phrase? Like, distance makes the heart. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Yeah, yeah. Which I, I yeah. is one of my favorite phrases because I probably fully believe it. Oh yeah, yeah, no, for sure. That's is definitely true.、Mm-hmm. So, what's your dream in life? Which I know that there's a lot of different kinds of doctors. I don't know if you necessarily want to be the testicle kind, but what kind do you want to be? Um, that's a tough question. I honestly don't know right now. I feel like I would have to like have some experience in the field, figure some things out, you know, see what I'm interested in. Ultimately,、mm-hmm. I just want to do something that helps people. You know, I know I'm a smart guy. I know I can get through pre med and medical school, so I just want to use the talents that I have to, you know, give back to the world, do something meaningful.、Mm, I like that. Do you? What do you do outside of school? Do you have hobbies, interests? Yeah, I have, I have some hobbies. I, I I honestly hate that question because like whenever people ask me like what hobbies I have, I just go blank. But、um, off the top of my head. I play a little bit of tennis. I've been playing.、Okay. I'm playing Zelda recently. Zelda's been taking up a lot of my time. I, I oh, the the new one. Yeah, the new one. I heard you were just hitting on it, Jack. Oh、uh, yeah, two seconds before you called in, I was talking to the stream, and I was talking. I was just talking a ton of shit on、uh, the. I, <laughs> I bought. I bought the new one because、uh, I need. I wanted something to play on the planes and stuff, but the old one, I I didn't like it. I actually don't know why I bought the new.、One. I really did not like the the Breath of the Wild. Really? Yeah, it's、I、like, like、uh, it's fucking. It's、oh, a、really? kind of a bullshit game. It's like 
padded and padded and padded with grass. And dude, people yeah, I, love I heard... this grass. People are like, I love the open world dynamic of the game. I love how much grass there is to explore. 10 out of 10. <laughs> no, I feel like, I, I mean, I feel like, you know, it's Breath of the Wild, so there has to be some some wild, you know what I mean? Right! They should have called it Breath of the Grass. Breath of the Grass. I that would have been, been a more apt title. Um, anyway, that was a stupid thing that I shouldn't have said, but... Uh, oh, yes, have you had sex since they cut your balls off? <laughs> no, I've actually, like, I've never had sex. Like, I'm, I'm a virgin. Oh, uh, okay. Are you, are you freshman in college? No, I'm a, I'm a sophomore. Actually, I just finished my sophomore year. Okay. Are you out, are you out there? Are you, like, going on the apps, or are you, um, focused on the grind? Are you religiously abstinent? What's, what's your, what's the deal? No, I mean... See, that's a tough question. Like, I, I wouldn't, I, like, I'm not out there just because, like, I feel like, <clears throat> I feel like I don't really put myself in a lot of situations like that. But, you know, I'm working on it. I was, last semester, it was just really, really tough with school and extracurriculars and stuff. So I was really busy. And I've been, I had this, like, pretty bad weed habit that I've been trying to get rid of. And I haven't smoked in, like, a week. And I feel a lot better, honestly. Hmm. Why do you think you're having trouble putting yourself out there? Um, I don't know. I just, you know, I feel like I'm not, I, I haven't really like developed socially in the best way. I feel like half of my high school, I was gone because of COVID. I was just at home, isolated. And then suddenly it's like freshman year. And now I'm at Temple, which is a huge school. It and is. it's kind of overwhelming. It's kind of overwhelming. But, you know, I'm working on it. I have confidence that I can, I, like, I'm not worried about it. Like, I'm, I have confidence that I can, you know, like, put myself out there and be successful with it if I really try. You seem like a no, you seem like a well-adjusted person. Can I'm I say trying, that man. to you? I'm, Do you believe that about yeah, yourself? I don't know. That's that's hard to say. I'm, I, yeah, you know what? I, I feel like I'm well-adjusted. I'm, I'm doing a good job taking care of myself, you know, working hard, have a bright future. <laughs> How is the ball? Th how has the one ball thing affected your ability to produce cum? Do you do not you at like? All. It hasn't really not at all. Yeah, it doesn't affect anything. Like it carries. Like, like I said, the the one ball it carries all the weight. Does everything. Dude, I don't know. I feel like some girls might be interested in you as an anomaly. I don't know if that's what you're going for, but <laughs> it it is a card to play. Uh, like I honestly don't know like what girls would think about it. Like, I'm really, like, not sure. I feel like, honestly, like, other than the incision, which is, like, on my lower abdomen area, it's not really too noticeable. So I feel like I would have to, like, draw attention to it for them to actually notice. Listen, I'm no online dating expert, but a Tinder profile where your bio just says, I have one testicle... Would definitely pique some people's interest. It's an interesting conversation starter. I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't I like message a girl saying that. But if you put it in your bio, could drum up. You know some. You know. I mean, there's a there's a lot of like, you know, there's a lot of people who are like into oddities and shit, and you might catch some of those. That's true. Maybe. You seem like a nice guy. Are you like um? Let me ask you this question. Are you, like, b bummed about it? Like, do you wish you were putting yourself up the out there more often? Or is it not really even a priority in your life? No, I mean, I definitely do wish I was putting myself out there a little bit more. I feel like, like, a lot of things in my life have gotten in the way. But I'm not sure if I'm just using that as an excuse. I mean, last year, I had, I had cancer. So that made things a little bit tough. This past <laughs> yeah. year, school had just been... <laughs> yeah, this past year's school has just been pretty difficult. And like I said, I, I had like a pretty, like I wouldn't say it's a problem, but like I was coping with weed pretty heavily. Mm. And I feel like once you start doing that, like you kind of just like get comfortable with isolating yourself, which mm. I don't want to do anymore. Was it medical so, marijuana? You know, I'm working on it. No, it's not. Just buying it off the street. Uh, okay, which I'm... Um... 
What did you buy it in Narnia? You know what Narnia is? Oh my god. Yeah, yeah I know what Narnia is. They still call it Narnia? There's this fucking yeah. it's in Te- uh, Temple University. There's this um Dude, what is it? Explain Narnia. So basically like like by this like bell tower area, there's this like little alleyway that's kind of secluded, but like everybody knows about it, so it's not super secluded but there's this little area with some benches and some grass where people usually go to smoke it's a nice little spot and it's called narnia and it's called narnia that's crazy that it's that it's still called that 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 like has lived on yeah i mean actually I, I i smoked there a lot but i've only recently learned like a couple months ago that it's called narnia there's this, I used to smoke weed all the time um, on the lawn where that bell tower is. Oh, yeah, right outside um, Beery Hall. Uh, Beery Beach, I think it's called, or the beach. Yeah, it, I, I think it is. Yeah. Man, I had a lot of time. I had a lot of great times uh, walking around that whole city and uh, smoking weed. That's really my favorite thing to do. I, I don't, I try not to talk, I, I mean, I'm kind of a fucking stoner right now, but I, it's just, it just has always been my favorite thing to do is walk around and smoke weed. And I've only recently been reconciling with the fact that that's bad for my health, but I don't want to give it up. I don't want to give, it, all the things that are bad for me, I just fucking don't want to give up. I love, what's your name again? My name is Sid. Sid, I fucking love getting stoned, going for a walk, and eating a big hamburger. I love it so much. I might love it more than I would hate dying. (laughs) No, I mean, if that's, like, that's completely valid. If that's what you want, that's what you want. And being outside and smoking and just eating something that's absolutely terrible for you and is probably going to give you a heart attack is probably one of the best activities. God damn it, Sid, you're supposed to be a medical professional. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> not yet, not yet. This was a test and you failed. I'm calling the dean. We don't have a dean right now, actually. He quit. Oh, I would too. Um, Sid. Yeah, I would too. Sid, Sid, yeah. Sid. All right, you have cancer. Well, you don't have cancer anymore, but you do have one ball. You've never had sex. Have you ever had any kind of sex? Have you ever had like a blowjob or a hand job? Um, no, I, I haven't. I mean, I've had a couple of situations here and there, but it's never, it's never really like led to that. Okay. But um, you know, I like I'm not really too worried about it or anything. I feel like I just you know need to like work on myself a little bit and um just continue like meditating, stop smoking oh weed, God. and I'll be fine. Oh my God, Sid, I'm um, how old are you? Like nineteen. I'm 20. You're 20? Oh, my fucking God, man. I'm jealous of you because when I, dude, when I was 20 and I was at Temple University, I was a fucking idiot. And, all, and you know, getting laid was like all I was obsessed with. And uh, I look back at it and now and I'm listening to you be like, you know, yeah, I'm just going to hang out and work on myself and meditate. And I'm like, I fucking wish I was as smart as you were. I would fucking wish I was as smart as you are when I was... 20 and going to temple so good on you oh, man, man. I I you're gonna have that. a great life i appreciate that man but like to be honest with you like it's not always you know i'm not always having this mindset you know sometimes it, it feels it feels kind of bad i get in my head a little bit about it but ultimately i know you know i'll be good what is uh, what would tell me what what you getting in your head looks like um i don't know i guess like when you <laughs> like i feel like the, the word virgin is used like as an insult pretty frequently mm-hmm. and like there's just a level of like like you know there's like it's like toxic masculinity that sure, kind of yeah. enforces the fact that you have to like lose your virginity at a certain age and like you just start comparing yourself to people and actually temple is i think the most sexually active campus in the united states so like that's true you know everybody around me is you know running around fucking each other mm-hmm. so it's hard to not get in your head about comparisons but that's, okay. Well, know, every time I want you to know, I want you to know. So every time you do start to get in your head 
about comparisons. I want you to know that I, I wish I was doing what you were doing when I was 20 and going to temple. So, well, I don't know if that's worth anything. No, that's definitely worth something. I, I appreciate that. That's, that's nice to hear. No, a lot of my obsession with, like, sex at that time, like, held me back from, like... Because, you know, I was, like, on the fucking Tinder and all the uh, apps all the time and, like, you know, on fucking Snapchat, like, like spending my whole day, like, like waiting for somebody to respond. I mean, it's a whole fucking horrible, shitty yeah, thing to be obsessed with. And so I think the yeah. mindset that you have of, like, I'm just going to meditate and hang out and get on my grind, you know, that's... That's that's where you want to be. You're doing it. You're doing it right, Sid. I want you to know that. I'm trying, man. But like, like I said, it's not always like that. Like just yesterday, you know, I was pretty horny. I was mm -hmm. on those apps, man. Yeah. I actually got two numbers, and nice. I was talking to these girls a little bit. But after a while, it's just like, do I really want to keep like mindlessly talking to them and like, I don't know, bro. Like, it's, I'd rather just stay at home. I'd rather just stay at home and play. No, 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 no Sid. Sid, you don't want to do any of that. You want to med you want to meditate for two hours a day and learn how to cut test cut cut counts. You want to meditate for two hours a day and learn how to cut cancer out of people's testicles. That's what you want to. That do. would be great. That would be great. That's what you want. Just I want you to listen. Like listen to this phone call again. I'm gonna post it on the something. Listen to this phone call oh, again. Okay, every time, every time you get all, every time you get horny. I want you to listen to my voice, okay, and, and and listen to me tell you that you're gonna be okay, that you can just uh, you can ignore all those feelings and do something productive with your life instead. Uh, I appreciate that, man. Well, what do we do now? What is there to do? Is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, I don't know. I'm kind of on the spot. Um, you know, everybody stay strong. I'm, I hear people calling every day with some real serious issues, real serious topics. And, you know, I hope everyone's doing okay. Um, if you feel bad, try to meditate. You feel better. And that's all. Hey, God bless you, Sid. You're, um, you're my role model. God bless you too, Greg. Take care, brother. You too, man. All right, when I come to Philly in September, I'm going to do uh I'm going to do the after I'm I'm coming to Philly, I'm doing underground arts. I'm doing my after party at Narnia. You're all invited. <laughs>